Hi, this is Paul Neal at Pen Productions, and uh, today I'm going to do a tutorial on creating this microphone. This wire head is a, a bit of a problem uh, to start with. It's uh, pretty complex. Uh, got lots of little uh, lines that are obviously uh, weaving in and out of each other, and uh, it's uh, finding the right process to be able to create something like this uh, is the trick with a you know building something this complex. So let's get started. I'm in Max 2017. I'm just going to start with a plane in the top viewport. And I'm just going to go with a plane um, about uh, 50 by 50 and 30 by 30 uh, segments here. And if we look at that uh, closer up, you can see it is about that many, um, uh, so to speak. So let's just center that out because I like to build everything in the center to start with. And I really only use the plane here just to get started. Um, uh, with the uh, with the lines and the amount of lines so that I can use it just to kind of make it real easy to get a starting point. Down at Edible Poly, I'm going to grab an edge and just grab an edge and do a ring and a loop and then just an extract uh, as smooth so the shape is extracted. Um, I'm going to just hide the plane off now because I no longer need it and we can uh, access the spline. So the spline has um, uh, all of these uh, verts in it and we have to offset those a little bit so let's do that in the left viewport and I'm going to select every other um, set of vertices along the spline I mean you could do this with a part of a spline if you wanted and copy and weld it back together again but that was pretty quick I'm going to uh, jump back into my um, type in transform which is uh, F12 and uh, change to a center pivot uh, so that we can offset them and we want to offset these a little bit so I'm thinking probably uh, a point three up and control I for invert and a negative point three down so that we've got uh, sort of a weaving going on and so you can see that we need those opposite now every other one should be opposite so uh, three in the keyboard just to step into your uh, sub object spline and I'll grab every other one again uh, real fast here once again you could do a couple of them and recopy them uh, but you know getting in the right distance part and whatnot probably take me every bit as long just to doing that um, so at this point it's that is probably the easiest or about the same as doing anything else X on the keyboard type in mirror I'm going to use the mirror modifier and in the Z so I'm going to flip over every other one so that they're they're flipped and um, uh, we can then start copying again convert it back to a spline I don't need the mirror anymore with all the splines selected I'll just uh, again go back to a centered rotation uh, pivot point here and uh, turn on uh, hit a for angle snap and copy that and you can see I copied it over but of course it now matches you can see where they're connecting and they should be the opposite again so once again mirror modifier in the X flip it over and then we've got our uh, our shape done so that's uh, um, our wire mesh essentially uh, created uh, I'm going to turn down the interpolation steps of optimize off to about two just to limit the amount of uh, segments that are created and in viewport if we take a look at that you can see now we've got uh, a shape that's weaved together so you can use this for all kinds of weaving uh, uh, shapes if you really wanted uh, I'm going to take my sides down to six and in that case my uh, um, smooth threshold to 180 uh, to make sure it smooths around the whole object and I can play around with the size now to get the um, how thick it should be so we're probably going to end up with something like that now I'm not going to turn this on at this stage I'm going to leave that off we have to get this into a round shape now and uh, getting into it a round shape is a little bit more of a you know tricky idea uh, bend modifiers you could try an FFD uh, that's another way to do it uh, you know possibly uh, curving it up into place with an FFD but uh, I came up with a unique way and I thought I'd show that the idea of using um, you know what people traditionally think of animation uh, modifiers as opposed to um, using what you think of as a modeling modifier so I want to drop a sphere in and the sphere I'm going to uh, turn on the hemisphere to 0.5 and you'll notice we still have a vert in the bottom. I want to get rid of that. I could collapse it and delete it. Um, I could also just use a slice plane with remove from bottom on and just move the um, slice plane up a little bit in the sub-object level uh, for the gizmo. 
And now I'm going to add one more. I'm going to add an X-Form modifier on there. And again, one on the keyboard. And I want to scale it flat uh, using the uh, X-Form gizmo. So it's completely flat at this point. Back to our uh, wire mesh. And we're going to add a skin wrap modifier. And the skin wrap modifier is going to wrap down to this um, semi, uh, this uh, hemispherical sphere. Um, and then all I need to do is turn off X form. And you can see that it has gone and uh, sort of pulled this up. Now we need to do a couple other things. One is turn on weight all points, which will get you this great cool shape going on, but probably not what we're after. And then we can do a few more adjustments, the, adjust the fall off up and the uh, distance up, and you can sort of re, uh, you know, pull them all tighter a little bit as the, uh, as the distance fall offs go up. So you can see that the envelopes are quite large now um, in the shape. So with that turned up, with that turned up like that and, and just adjusted, we can kind of adjust how much it's pulling on it. Now we can also put other deformations on this, uh, this sphere if we wanted, um, but that's pretty good there. Um, another modifier, renderable spline, I'll throw that on. And uh, again, we can adjust the, uh, the uh, you know, thickness of them. Again, I'll turn this back down to um, six with a smoothing threshold of 180. So it's smoothed all the way around. And uh, maybe that needs to be a seven. You know, that's probably not too bad. We could even try 0.8 or something, depending on this, you know, the size of it and everything else. So that's getting our shape and form uh, that's going there. And then we just need a symmetry modifier. Whoop, not that, X, I'm too fast on my keyboard here. Symmetry modifier. And um, that's gonna be a long X. So we're gonna uh, cut it in half and uh, make sure it's cut in half. At this point, you could uh, drop the whole thing down. You could collapse it down to an edible poly if you want, but you know me, I'm kind of against just collapsing things for no reason. However, I probably would uh, get rid of the skin wrap uh, as soon as I don't need it because it requires uh, it being um, tied to another object in the scene, and it's just a bunch of overhead there that isn't needed and, and a problem waiting to happen if something happens to that sphere inside there. So... <clears throat> With that said, let's just make that a gray tone at this point. And um, X will uh, go and get us a tube. And um, I'll go make a tube shape. Oops. So we've got a tube shape here. Um, just its height. Just the inner a little bit sides maybe 36 just the outer a little bit we don't need really any height segments in this looks like I need my uh, radius on the outside a little a little bigger maybe and uh, maybe a bit more height or something we'd have to play around with the uh, the shape a bit more I'm going to uh, put a bevel on this or a chamfer sorry so X uh, uh, chamfer modifier and chamfer that off just as a standard chamfer pull it down low and you can see it chamfering vertices it doesn't need to be chamfering so we want an angle of something just below 90 I'll throw it in 80 just so it only takes on 90 degree corners and uh, once again I'm going to uh, put a mirror modifier on this I don't need it uh, welding anything and just um, copy so that we've got this uh, nice angle here and this is an object I would definitely leave procedural as long as possible uh, because we can go and adjust. You can see where it's, uh, um, you know, right now clipping a little bit so we can kind of find the best spot for that or whatever. Again, I think I need a bit more shaping done on the uh, top piece here and I'd actually do it to the sphere um, with uh, most likely a taper modifier. So I'll come back to that. Um, in the front viewport now, uh, I'm going to create a rectangle and you wonder why a rectangle. So I'll make it about the right length for the handle. And again, let's just center that, collapse it down to an edible spline, two on the keyboard, grab the top and bottom segments, right click divide, and then delete one half, and X, and then we want a lathe modifier, 
drop a lathe modifier on it, give it enough segments again, maybe 36 or something to keep it nice and smooth, unless we're going for game model or whatever. Make sure you turn on weld core, because if you don't, you get this ugly mess kind of happening at the bottom where a pile of vertices are on top of one another. So I'm going to um, uh, you know, turn that on. And with that on now, we can go about shaping this. I always like taking all my vertices down to a corner uh, to start with. Um, and then we can start uh, playing around with the, um, the shape, just taper it a little bit. You can watch what it's going to look like. Um, let me pull this over a bit, say there, and it's going to fit in here really nicely. So we can then just start refining this. And I'm just going to do another refine right about there, maybe. In case you see the edge, because I kind of want a little bit of an edge here, I'm just going to put it on an angle. I could even get rid of this one probably, or just uh, you know move it up so it's just on the inside a little bit. It really wouldn't matter. And again, I'm going to do a, maybe a refine, and put a little step in it here somewhere. Segment, just pull that in. And let's do another shape up here again, um, make it a little more interesting. So we could kind of call that, you know, done. You shape it more however you feel you uh, need to for whatever design and shape and form that it is. Uh, I want to round out some of these just a little bit and give myself a little bit nicer uh, corners. So uh, easy to do that uh, with splines. I'm going to use the fillet and just round out that corner and uh, maybe round out this corner if I want. Just that touch, just to soften it. Maybe this one as well. You know, unless it's a real hard edged, um, you know, mic, it's up to you what you're uh, what you're looking for. But that's done as well. And don't forget, of course, because we're using a, a lathe. Sorry, I'm just going to turn off the sub object. Lathe, make sure the generate uh, mapping coordinates is ton uh, turned on and it's unwrapped already. Um, and maybe just make that one gray for the render. And uh, voila, we are done. Other than maybe just tweaking out the um, uh, that sphere and playing with the shape of our, um, of, our, of our object here. Again, I'm going to grab that sphere and uh, let's put a taper modifier on top. And with a taper modifier, you can see it's doing something really cool. Uh, I'm gonna grab the center and move it up near the top. You can see it's taking its sweet time to update because the um, because of uh, the, the skin wrap that's in there. And uh, this certainly looks a little odd. So I want to bring the pivot point up to the top of the, uh, and you can see it's now tucking the sides in. Well, obviously it's not as much, you know, that's not what I'm looking for. But if I curve them in and then taper it out, I can actually curve the edges of the um, of the sort of the, the sphere in. So um, let's turn our tube back on. You can see that I can pinch it and now inside of that tube nicely, and probably get a little bit better shape going uh, than what I might expect um, on that shape. So um, that's starting to look pretty good. And looks like I managed to bump that over. There we go. So now we can even tighten this up a little bit more, um, you know, with tube. And this is where making sure you leave things procedural, you know, helps a lot because now I can just go in ahead and adjust it at a procedural level as opposed to having to deal with it, um, trying to scale it or whatever else, you know. And let's just unhide everything else. And there's our microphone 
produced. Um, you know, cable obviously is really, really easy to uh, handle at that point. So that will render up real nice, uh, really easy to adjust. It's mostly procedural still, really easy to change the shape when your art director says, hey, can you do something a little different with it? Uh, or you decide that it's a little off model. Don't collapse anything until you absolutely need to. And again, the only thing I'd probably collapse on this wire um, is the uh, is the skin wrap, uh, just because of the overhead uh, that uh, it's creating in there. Everything else, I'd leave it if possible the way it is, unless I needed special unwraps or specific unwraps on it, um, and I needed to put an unwrap modifier above the uh, mesh level in the stack, and then I'd collapse that down into the uh, model, because it's always best to collapse your UVs down into the model. But I'd always keep this as a separate um, file, because now if I want to make adjustments to it or make a new one, it's really easy to do so. So much by going and parametrically uh, uh, dialing in some values. Hope you enjoyed that.